so we've just done, or at least you've probably just seen my video about Keir Starmer, the protest, and of course that asking questions about the genuine safety of our politicians. That is an important question I think needs to be addressed and should be asked. However, however, after I did that video, I then went and looked up who this protester was, what movement they were behind. And once I found out these people were pro-PR, I immediately went, oh no. <laughs> and I know Phil's already done his video on them yesterday, but I want to do something hopefully that's a bit different and really explain to you, just like Phil has said, why these people are bad for PR. Like this, the PDD or the People Demand Democracy is a bad, bad idea. Their tactics are bad and other PR groups that are campaigning for PR have been very aware that um, Extinction Rebellion are potentially behind this group, or at least they have links to this group which is why they are demanding direct action. And think for a second how well Extinction Rebellion's direct action has gone down. Not very well at all. They have not really achieved any successful campaigning. They've more, in reality, incredibly annoyed the public and the fact that whenever they do protest, it doesn't become about the fact that they are campaigning for, you know, um, against climate change. They they want, you know, uh, things like Green New Deals. Everything that we have seen other groups campaign for and do a lot more successfully than them. All that energy that Extinction Rebellion puts into their campaigns, if they were to actually engage with the political system and put that amount of energy into it, then they might actually affect a serious political change. Instead, they don't. They go out and they do these, well, stunts. Yes, they, quote, make the papers every so often, but what change have Extinction Rebellion actually brought? And the last thing and this is this is seriously something talking as someone who campaigns for PR and does want a change to our voting system, the last thing we need, the last thing we need is a group that campaigns for PR along the lines of Extinction Rebellion, which is what we saw on stage just a couple of weeks ago. They are not going to help. Other PR groups have already got together and said, yeah, we're not really supporting your activities. We are saying your direct action will not help our cause. And I, I worry now that this group, PDD, or People Demand Democracy, is going to do damage to the PR movement rather than help it. Now, we're going to go through their press release, what they put out. I think it's worth going over. And here's the thing. Some of the stuff they are going to say in this is stuff that I have said other people who campaign for PR have said before in the past. Where we differ, where we differ is the fact that I believe to get PR, there needs to be two things. First of all, there needs to be a public awareness campaign about PR, why we need PR, and why it would be good for the UK to change its voting system in that way. That's the first leg. The second leg of this, you are only going to get a change to PR if we get MPs and political parties on board with PR. And that means getting MPs elected who are pro-PR. We've talked about 
Uxbridge, the Labour uh, candidate who was standing in Uxbridge, was pro-PR. And of course, he didn't win, but those are the types of people we need in power. And that would affect far, far more political change than what people demand democracy have just done on that stage. Because I'll tell you now, nobody's talking about PR because of their direct action. It's either A, oh, look, Labour are now selling glitter T-shirts, <laughs> which, to be honest, good move on Labour's part there. Um, and of course, the other action was that people are talking about what the video, like I said in my video just recently about this, this highlights safety concerns once again for MPs. And for someone who was about to be, you know, you know, hopefully the next Prime Minister of the UK, we would expect him to be more protected than he was. So we're going to go into their press release, uh, what they released, and have a look about this. But like I say, some of this stuff that they're going to say in this press release, we're going to agree with. You know, if you are pro-PR, we are going to agree with this. Where we disagree is the tactics and the method that they are using. Because I will tell you now, if they intend to continue along the lines with Extinction Rebellion and their type of direct action, this is going to become a serious hindrance to the PR movement, not a help to it. So let's get into their press release and see what they had to say. Uh, but before we do that, um, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to the Patreon page, the one-off-dation link, the Buy Me Coffee link, etc., uh, etc., et all down below as well. Uh, so let's get on uh, into this. So uh, this is a press release from Tuesday, the 10th of October, uh, with the title of People Demand Democracy, Distru uh, Dis Demonstrator Disrupts Keir Starmer's Labour Conference Speech. Uh, during Keir Starmer's Labour Party conference speech this afternoon, a single demonstrator climbed on the stage and temporarily stopped the speech. The individual covered Starmer in glitter and wore a t-shirt saying, people demand democracy. Announcing uh, to the crowd, a true citizen, a true democracy is citizen-led and politics needs an update. I, I don't, still don't understand why the glitter... Uh, how, how does that help advance the cause for PR? <laughs> but anyway, they continue. Um, People Demand Democracy is a new group calling for an upgrade to the UK political system. And this is where we disagree, using civil disobedience to get their message across. Why are you using civil disobedience? Civil disobedience is not going to help the case and the cause uh, and the cause for PR. If anything, it is going to annoy people, just as we've seen with Extinction Rebellion, and it's going to turn them off. They're not going to end up talking about PR. They're going to end up talking about how disruptive your protest is. Like I say, you ain't helping. You are not helping the cause for PR. Um, so they continue. So they are calling for a fair proportional voting system for Westminster elections and a permanent legally binding uh, national House of Citizens selected by Democratic Lottery. And again, this is another thing where I would strongly disagree. Uh, House of Citizens, do, you, do is that your replacement for the House of Lords? Um, Democratic Lottery meaning what exactly how how is that meant to to work out <laughs> in this I, I think this is one of the ideas that has been floated before that you randomly just select people to go sit in the House of Lords that seems to be the, to be the worst idea I could possibly think of for for like replacing the House of Lords with I want to replace it don't get me wrong. But replacing with that, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So they continue. People demand democracy, say. The people of the UK are more disillusioned by the state of politics than at any time in living memory. 
Look at the polls. After years of battling over Brexit, lockdown parties, abuse claims, crumbling public services, and crashing living standards, people are sick to the back teeth of politicians. And we are furious that there is no way to make our voices heard. This has got to change. One of the things I always say, or I've said over the past, a lot of people who say we want to make our voices heard, protest, fine. That's a perfectly valid reason and, and fine. I'm never going to say don't protest. But to go and do what you did to Keir Starmer has not advanced your cause. People are not talking about PR because of what you did. I'm talking about it because I went to actually look at this. And as soon as I saw that you were pro-PR, I immediately went like that. And I know I'm not the only one. I talked to Phil about this as well. And he said the same thing. That that's how he felt as well. You have not helped this the cause for PR in what you are doing. Saying that, um, that there is no way to make your voice heard is a complete and utter disillusionment with the current political system. Now, if you are annoyed with the current political system, that's fine. But one of the ways to change it is to get involved with it and make your voices heard through that way. And you can do that. But we have seen over time, people just say, that doesn't work. When you ask them why you say it doesn't work, they just say, oh, politicians don't listen. Why do you say the politicians don't listen? Oh, well, they don't listen. <laughs> it, 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 it's almost a dead-end cul-de-sac conversation half the time when someone immediately says that. But they continue. They've said we need a democratic alternatives that give hopes uh, to uh, give the boy uh, gives the people of the UK a voice to deal with the major challenges of our time, rampant in in uh, inequality, an escalating climate crisis, political corruption, and on. That what do we have instead? A Labour Party offering very little in terms of real change. They have offered change, and I've said before, getting. Um, you know, Labour to get on the PR bus is going to take a lot of campaigning. And we are a lot further in the pro-PR stance than ever before. Again, these people don't really seem to be connected in any sort of way to the actual PR movement and, and stuff that is going on because we have people who are connected with the PR movement who are like, Yes, we are getting somewhere. Slowly but surely, we are getting somewhere. The tide for pro-PR movement has been changing drastically over the recent years. Now, I don't think we're going to get PR in the next parliament. I am fine with that. But to get the Labour Party to be pro-PR, you have to get pro-PR MPs elected, and you have to start movements with the Labour Party calling for PR, and have those groups in PR by Labour members populated to show that they have support. That is happening in the Labour Party right now. There are those groups. They were constantly talking with each other during that conference. And instead, you've just gone, no, nah, I'm not going to get involved with that. I'm just going to go throw glitter on Keir Starmer. That has not helped the PR movement one bit. Uh, anyway, they continue. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, here we are. Uh, don't know where so we are. Um, the important way to So, yeah. Uh, the demonstrator who disrupted the speech today said, uh, House of Citizens will regain power in society. So what is this House of Citizens? <laughs> how, how, how do you mean that? Are you just going to change the name of the House of Commons? Because I've got a bad bad news for you. House of Commons means House of the Common People. It's where the common people of the UK used to sit. <laughs> Again, this gets me so annoyed and so worried about this group. So, so worried. These are not helpful at all. Um, the House of Citizens will realign power in society. How is it going to do that? I'd be very interested to see. 
It will empower people to set the agenda, guide policies, and keep politicians in check. We all need a chance for a seat at the table, and we all deserve a voice in the room. The People's House brings people together like a jury and provides the time to hear from experts and scientists to decide what policy is best for everyone. I mean, we already do that. We already do that. And yet, these people say, oh, the current system doesn't work. <laughs> oh my god yeah oh god these people are going to be a nightmare these people are going to be an absolute nightmare for the pr movement um the labor party has been captured by donors and lobbyists who have more control over keir starmer than his members prove it prove it generally prove it <laughs> um the House of Citizens um, will force politicians to listen to the people. How will it do that? It dismantles their relationship with the rich. Again, how will it do that? Uh, it will create a meaningful change in our economy and fix inequality. How will it do that? That's all very nice, rosy, flowery words. How will it do that? What powers is the Citizens' House going to have to do that. It would address the climate and eco ecological emergency and transform our country. Again, how would it do that? <laughs> this is what I, I said time and time again, where saying all that stuff, perfectly nice, where's the policy? Where's the actual plans? This campaign is absolutely awful. It would listen to scientists and communities and unearth consensus, not profit of conflict and division. So what then, if you're in your people's house, you get one side that is pro-Brexit and one side that is anti-Brexit and wants to rejoin the EU. That will lead to conflict. How do you create consensus then? <laughs> you can see the problems outright in this people demand democracy have written letters to the uh, to the leaders of the two leading political parties labor and the conservatives so i see you're not even bothering to write to the liberal democrats um good move there guys <laughs> no and i'm being sarcastic if you can't tell um with an ultimatum oh my god no no. Jesus Christ, no. Why? Why on earth would you write to two leaders of the political parties with an ultimatum? I'm sorry, but they've just broken me with the sheer stupidity of that. So they would write to them with an ultimatum saying, implement our demands by the 30th of September 2023, or we will take proportionate action to get our message across. <laughs> God, is this... I, I have to ask a serious question. Is this just a psyop? Is this like a, 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 a PSYOP launched by the Conservative Party because they are generally worried about PR so that they need like a, a group which will just put a fly in the ointment because they're worried about how the pro-PR pro movement and pro-PR message has been flowering for quite some time now? I, I, I have to ask that a serious question. This does not help advanced PR. 
it did not help Extinction Rebellion. It did not get their message across. It did not help advance any policies in Parliament. Doing this is a dumb idea. An absolutely, I'm trying not to swear, an absolutely dumb idea. What on earth are you doing? This is stupid. This is massively unhelpful idiots. <sighs> anyway, the letter to Keir Starmer reads, The UK will likely hold a general election in the next 12 to 15 months. Given the people of this country, the, uh, give, give this people the opportunity, give the people of this country the opportunity to, I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm just so angry at this. Um, give the, give the people the opportunity to input into who should run it. You mean like a general election like we have already? <laughs> I mean, first past the post system is hardly the perfect system, but it does give the people the input to say who should run it. I, I am so I am so angry at this. They are going to be the worst thing ever for the PR movement. They are so going to be a nightmare to deal with. So they continues. According to the polls, there is a very good chance you will become the next prime minister. However, a different government will not solve the deeply entrenched divisions. Uh, Shack, uh, shackling the UK public, preventing us from uniting to tackle the huge challenges facing us. Why can't we do that with the current system now? People will get their opportunity to vote at a general election. They are having their say. I agree the, per the current system is not perfect, but it is a democratic one. How can we not do that now and tackle those big challenges? Which, from what we heard over the weekend, the course of the Labour, <laughs> the weekend, Ed Miliband and Rachel Reeves are more than up for the challenges that you have suggested, especially when it comes to climate change. Anyway, the political system itself is not fit for purpose. It is not serving the needs of the majority and the resentments towards Westminster will only deepen unless a new government offers real change. Crises such as the cost of living, uh, living and climate are related. Their roots lie in the question of power. Who has it and who doesn't? Our, de our democracies are incom <laughs> incomplete, undermined and broken. Those that have wealth and power have done that to present to prevent us, the people, from being in charge. If we want to deal with any of the crises that we face, we will have to upgrade our democracy. God, I, I, I'm so shocked they haven't suddenly said we demand a complete and utter uh, people's proletarian movement. I mean, that's generally what he sounds like at the moment. Um. Voters favour a new uh, electoral system over the old by almost two to one. That is true. But you doing this is not going to help it. The Labour Party conference in 2020 endorsed a new proportional electoral system with around 80% support. And you know how they did that? They did that by hard work and campaigning with it and working through the party. And we keep on doing that. We keep on campaigning for it we keep on showing how much support there is for it. And eventually, the message will get through. But the Labour Party leadership has refused to accept that democratic decision. Um, they don't have to accept everything that the party puts forward. That's just how it works sometimes. The leadership ultimately we'll get to decide what goes in the manifesto, what doesn't. You can disagree with that all you want, but that's how political parties work. It works that way in the 
uh, Labour Party works that way. In the Conservative Party works that way. In the Lib Dems Party, you want a perfect example? Look at the Green Party, who also had their conference just before the Labour Party conference, who put forward pro-HS2 movements by Greens for HS2. But the leaders of the Green Party refused to let that motion onto the board. If you are going to call the Labour Party anti-democratic for doing that, then you must also call the Green Party anti-democratic as well for not allowing the motion to support HS2 onto their voting platform. Are you going to do that? I very doubt you do. Just unfortunately, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. That's our system. It is not a perfect system. I will accept that. But I would rather live in an imperfect system where we can get stuff done rather than demand pure perfection, as you all seem to be calling for here. But anyway, they continue. The UK needs a proportional voting system so that every vote counts and a permanent citizens' assembly made up of people from all walks of life to discuss major long-term issues without party political pressures. That's why the people demand democracy. A permanent citizens' assembly is a bad idea. It is not going to work. We do that pretty much almost already for jury, du for jury duty. How is someone going to be selected? What if they don't turn up? What are their political beliefs? What if you elect overwhelmingly people from a, a conservative majority into that political, uh, your citizens' assembly? Then what? What if they want something incredibly pro-conservative, but you might have an incredibly like socialist party? Yeah. Like, trust me, a, a, a permanent... I am for Citizens' Assembly. I think Citizens' Assembly do serve a purpose. But having a permanent Citizens' Assembly replace the House of Lords? No. I, that's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. Um, uh, so, where are we? Let's finish this off. Um, so, this letter asks leaders to support these changes by the 30th of September. And if there was no response... Uh, and and sorry, and there was no response. So today, uh, Star, uh, Keir Starmer's speech was disrupted, and disruptions is planned to continue, targeting both Labour and Conservative parties. Um, yeah, and uh, why? Why should they listen to you? Um, sorry, I, I I can't take you seriously. As someone who campaigns and generally wants PR. And has talked constantly on this channel about how good changing the Westminster voting system to PR, to PR would be and how that would look. Not only that, but talked about the, replacing the House of Lords with like a house of like regional representatives where each region gets like the same amount of, of like representatives and it all works by like PR. I have done more advocating for PR in those just couple of moments talking about that than you have just done in glitter bombing Keir Starmer and sending an ultimatum demanding PR or else you're going to do direct action, which guess what? Not going to be listened to. Labour and the Conservatives aren't going to take you seriously and people like me who campaign for PR are not going to take you seriously either. And I know for a fact the other pro-PR campaigners out there, the other pro-PR campaigns don't take you seriously either. So the idea of doing this to advance the course for PR is dumb, it's stupid, you are not helping, you are a fly in the ointment, and to be honest, you almost look like you're some sort of conservative psyop to try and delay PR from being implemented. I'm sorry, it makes me so angry. <laughs> it makes me so, so angry. Um, but yeah... <laughs> Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, so I'll tell you what, this has generally made me really angry. Really angry. And, uh, you know, I think Phil put it right in his video. Useless, useless idiots. Or unhelpful idiots. Getting involved in this. This doesn't help anyone. 
for it doesn't help advance the cause for PR. It, it, it delays, blocks. <laughs> you aren't helping people. Just please stop. Go away. <laughs> let the people who have been campaigning for PR very successfully, by the way, let them get on and do it. Because I'll tell you what, they've been doing a far, far better job without you. You ain't going to help them. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you all next time.